What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Team Fish Knuckles YouTube channel. Um, I'm so happy today because a lot of people thought, you know, the forest giant plants, it's gone, rotated, banned and expanded, it's gone, blah, 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 can't do nothing. Well, today, we're going to go over Decidueye and why I think it's still the best deck of the format. I think Decidueye can take down any deck in the format except for, uh, except for Volcanian. Volcanian and Fire decks. Nah, don't play against those because you're going to lose. But anything else you can easily take down with the Decidueye deck. This format is so slow now. And even the decks that like are slow can take down the Volcanian decks like Greninja. And you got Top of Bulu can probably take down Volcanian as well. It's a little rough matchup. Gardevoir can take down Volcanian as well. Um, so Volcanian still not in a good spot. It does seem like it's a good deck right now. Don't get me wrong. Volcanian is probably really strong. Especially with Ho-Oh GX. It's so good, but Decidueye can, I, I would take, I could bet money that I could take down any deck in the format right now, especially since like, you know, Flareon rotated out, so you don't have to worry about like stage one using Flareons and hitting you for weakness, which is very annoying. Um, Vileplume's gone, which actually does help Decidueye out, out a lot, because you don't have to worry about Vileplume coming to play. Now you can use more item cards. It's a lot more fun, and today we're covering, of course, Decidueye, and I think it's still the best deck in the format. Call me crazy, but you know, just love my flying bird Pokemon. Uh, but today we're going for Decidueye. We, we know what he does. Feather Arrow, 20. Put two, uh, two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. Rage Leaf, 90, and Hollow Hunt to get back three cards. Firmly just out back into your hand. Somebody to start a lawnmower. Hopefully you can't hear that. Hopefully you cannot hear the lawnmower. Um, I have to watch the video. Make sure you can't hear after I wrote, after I finish this. Great. Um, but we're playing a four three four. I uh, decidueye line. Um, it's not a four 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 anymore because we don't have the force of giant plants. But we do still have rare candy, which is still fantastic. So four three four. Uh, decidueye just get it out as quickly as possible. So. One of the guys we want to start with is Vulpix. Vulpix still does have that really good attack called Beacon to search for two Pokemon to put them into your hand, which is really, really nice to help you set up. Get like you get Beacon for two Dartrexes, and your opponent's like, "Oh my goodness, he's about to get double Dartrex!" And the next turn, you get down double Decidueye, and you're good to go. Uh, we're still playing one Nine Tails. Nine Tails is still really good for the Ice Blade attack. Do 50 to one of your opponent's Pokemon and Ice Path GX to move all the damage from Nine Tails to your opponent's Act Pokemon. Still really, really good attack. But mainly, what we're using for is for Beacon. We are playing one Orangaroo for that Struck. Uh, no longer Shamus are in the deck, but you still, you're going to be fine. You're going to play a bunch of cards out of your hand and uh, Struck for a couple cards. And it's really good late game too. Late game end of one or two. Then you Struck for one card, maybe play both down and then Struck for a couple. It's still really, really good. Uh, two Top of Cocoa for Flying Flip. Does 20 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon. Um, and and two Lele. You know, of course, four cards. But the main reason why this deck is still so good is because of Espeon EX with that Miraculous Shrine. Every deck nowadays is a setup deck, like their stage ones and stage twos and stuff like that. So the whole plan with Decidueye now is not really to take knockouts, it's to spread the love with like Nine Tails, with like Decidueye, with Coco, and then de evolve everything with Espeon. Don't get me wrong, you can still raise loot to knock stuff out, but the whole plan is to use the Miraculous Shrine to de evolve your opponent's Pokemon and win that game, and we'll show how that does work. Um, you got to think now, the best decks of format are all evolutions. You got Gardevoir. Um, if you de-evolve the Guardies to Curlius, you win. Uh, Garbodor Espeon, you de-evolve them and you win. You still have to worry about Garbodor Toxin, but you do play two Field Blower, and you have the GX attack to get them back in your hand. So you're still okay in that matchup. Um, so you got Field Blower, which can get rid of that. Um, let's see what else. There's Greninja. You get de-evolve or just straight win because you're grass and they're water. Volcanion, like I said, is scary. Metagross, well, you de-evolve the Metagross to Metang because you win as well. They do play max potions, which sometimes make things weird, but they can't one-shot you, so that's really good as well. Um, what else is there? I've seen some Magnezone decks, thanks to uh, thanks to Andrew Mahone from Darium's competitive Pokemon channel. Um, so some Magnezone decks, but still same thing. If you de-evolve their Magnezone, they can't get energy display, then you win that way. Um, because most of these decks that you like that base around like energy, once you de evolve, they can't really attack anymore. Like Bulu, if you de evolve their Vika Volts, they can't really attack you anymore. Gardevoir, so if we de evolve Gardevoir, they don't have any attackers in general, so that's really good. Magnezone, um, so I think it's still a really, really good deck right now just because of the Espeon. Um, so that's, yeah, I think it's why it makes the deck so good. But two Field Blower just for Garbodor, like I said. Three Rare Candy because we need to have Rare Candy to Decidueyes. 
Um, one stretcher to put one Pokemon back in your hand, or three from Discard back in your hand, and a two Revitalizer. Now, I might want to cut the two Rescue Stretcher, one Revitalizer. Revitalizer is still really good, just to get back to you, like Dartrex or Decidueye. Um, but it's, it's fine. We're testing still right now, We're trying to figure it out 100%. Two Timer Ball, which is really, really good. Uh, flip two coins for each head, stretch deck for evolution Pokemon, reveal it, and put it in your hand, then shuffle your deck. Um, so this is going to help you get down like Decidueyes and Dartrexes, maybe you have Rare Candy and Time Ball. If you flip one head, so you're usually in good position. Um, or Ultra Ball to search for any Pokemon. So two Acerola. Acerola is really, really good because you pick up one of your damaged Pokemon. And one thing that you could do is let's say you have double Decidueye and Dartrex. Well, you can double Feather Arrow, Acerola the active Decidueye, put it back down, and, and then and Feather Arrow again. Um, which saves like your eight, which makes you have another feather arrow, and you get to save all your energies and stuff like that. So really, really good card. Uh, two Bridget, you don't want to prize one, and turn one Lele for Bridget is fantastic in this deck, especially with the Volpix. People need to in turn one, really, really strong. Uh, two Guzma, I kind of want a third one, uh, but mainly, like I said, we're, we're not taking knockouts. We're using Miraculous Shrine to deal all things. Guzma, for the most part, is to get stuck in the act, get stuff stuck in the act spot. Four and four Sycamore. We no longer have VS Seeker, so you really need to make sure you're playing four and four VS Seeker. Sometimes I want another draw card in here, but there's really not a good one right now, unfortunately. So we're sticking with the Ranguru. Uh, two Choice Pen. So you do 120 now with Decidueye and then some Feather Arrow, so you can take some knockouts. Two Floodstones to give that free treat. Four DC and four Grass Energy, and that is going to be my Decidueye deck. Now, it's not 100% based around Decidueye anymore. It's definitely heavily concentrated on this one Aspion EX. But, I mean, it's still a fantastic deck. Decidueye is not going anywhere. It is going to be one of the strongest decks in the format. I don't care what people say. Forest is gone, but Decidueye is still here to play. But, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully, that lawnmower is not... You can't hear it in here. Uh, because if it is, I'll have to re-record this. Um, but, yeah. We'll see the game in action, deck in action here in a second. All right. All right, so bring us Vitor playing a Grass, Psychic, and a Lightning deck, which might be Vigabulu, which I think Vigabulu is still a good matchup for us. I think it's Vigabulu. It seems like it is, uh, but we're going first because in Vigabulu, all you have to do is devolve their Vigavolts. And once you do that, you pretty much win the game because they can't attack anymore because they don't have any Vigavolts they can't constantly use its attack. Uh, so we got a Rallet. We have a DCE and a Guzma. Um, one thing that we could do is Lele... Free Bridget, you get down two Rallets, and there's a Top of Coco, and an Ultra Ball, which makes things kind of interesting. So I'm still going to go for the Lele. Uh, yes, with we'll a super supporter card, grabbing a Bridget, used a Bridget, and just going to grab three basic Pokemon. Now, what three basic Pokemon? I think what I'm going to grab is two Rallets. Let's see, one, two, three, four, and then a Ninetales. I mean, a Vulpix. <laughs> We could go Top of Coco. Uh, Top of Coco does guarantee us a turn to Flying Flip to start putting pressure on, uh, which is not a bad idea either. I think I'm, yeah, I think I'm gonna go the Coco route instead. All right, so put those three guys down. We'll put down the Oranguru, <laughs> put a DCE on the Top of Coco, and we're just gonna pass to our opponent's turn. All right, now the only bad thing is we don't have a um, what is it? We don't have a spot for Espeon. They receive Bridget, and I imagine this is going to get, like, two Grubbas and a Bulu, if I'm thinking he's playing top of Bulu. And no, it's a Glisspod Garboder deck, and this is going to be an interesting matchup. I don't know how this goes, actually. All right, so... Hmm. Because, um, you know, Garboder has those Floodstones. Um, I mean, the Garbo Tox and stuff like that. There's a Grass Energy. And just pass onto our turn. All right, so we get a Sycamore. I'm going to Ultra Ball. <clears throat> Discard. The... Sycamore and the Acerola. And with this, I'm going to grab a Dartrex, okay? And I think what I'm still going to do is just go for Sycamore. As long as we hit a Flowstone or a Grass Energy, we'll be able to get out uh, the the Top of Cocoa and start spreading with the Flying Flip. The only problem is Glisspot does knock us out. So put down the Dartrex. I'm going to Ringaroo for one just to dig a little bit, just trying to find a Flowstone. Uh, there's an N. Um in could be good i don't know what's in his hand he could have really good stuff but i think i'm still going to end to conserve the guzma and the sycamore all right so we see ultra ball we see revitalizer but we have a grass energy and we will have to commit a grass energy to the rallet to retreat this turn so grass energy i'm gonna ultra ball i'm gonna discard the the revitalizer and the choice ban we're gonna grab a second dartrex okay so now we're threatening two decidueyes next turn so put down the dart uh decidueye we will retreat and we'll flying flip 
uh, which will not take a knock out of anybody, but we'll start putting some pressure. So we do 20, 20, 20, 20. And then next turn, what we could do is maybe uh, Feather Arrow, Feather Arrow twice to both these guys, leave them with, them with 30 HP left, and we'll just have to go from there and see what happens. The only thing I'm scared about, if he finds a Garbodor and a Floatstone, we will need to find one of those Field Blowers that we play in our deck. Right now, we only have 2, 3, 4 in a Discard Pile, so I'm not really too scared of a Garboder, but can he get a Gliss Pot out this turn? Most likely, yes. I don't see why he wouldn't be able to. It's not that too crazy to see. Now, if I knew he was playing Vigabulu, I would have played this deck totally different. There's a DC actually going to the active, which is fine for me in a Sycamore. Alright, so he discards a bunch of stuff. A Sorolla being discarded is a one good thing for us. Does he find the Glisspot? If he finds the Glisspot, he will be able to take a knockout this turn. But does he find an Ultra Ball or a Glisspot? Uh, there's another Trubbish coming down to the field. And... Let's see what else does our opponent decide to do here. There's a Floodstone going down to the new Trubbish, the one he just put down. So no Garbodor threat right now. And there we see Ultra Ball. Most likely grabbing a Gliss Pot. He discards another Rainbow Energy, which is really good for us. There's two of those in the discard pile. And there's a Gliss Pot GX coming down. It does have that first suppression attack. So he will be able to do 120 this turn. Uh, taking the knockout. But if we could put the pressure on this Gliss Pot... Um, Two, four, six. Maybe you know we could we could knock out the wind pod. Maybe knock out both the trubbishes. Or yeah, that's what we're gonna try to do. We're always gonna go for the espion play. It seems like it's the best play in the game right now. And we'll send up the dark tracks. Hopefully we can hit like double decidueye, rare candy decidueye. Be really cool. There's a floatstone. We'll put that on the active. We'll rangaroo for one. Just trying to find a decidueye something. Okay, there's a timer ball. So let's see. Can we flip double heads? There's a tails and a heads. So we will grab a decidueye. Put that on the active, and we will play it in. Give us both new cards. We get six. He gets five. But let's see. What do we find here? There's a top of Coco and a DCE, which are some good cards to draw into right now. Um, we get an Ultra Ball as well, but we really... We can kind of discard the Guzma, but I really want to save the Lele. So I'm put on the Coco. I am going to Feather Arrow, the active Galissapod. Okay. I'm going to put a DC on that top of Coco retreat and do another flying flip, uh, doing some damage to everybody. Uh, we will set this Gliss Pot ready to be knocked out if we get that Wind Pot out in play. So on our opponent's turn, uh, that Trubbish has 40, this Trubbish has 40, this Trubbish has 20. What we're worried about is a uh, Flowstone and a Garboder, Garbotox come down. He only needs a Garbotox for this one and then he's good to go. But right now we're setting up multiple knockouts. You see this guy's 40, uh, 30 HP left, this guy's 30 HP left, this guy's has 50. And if we de-evolve, we could take a knockout on this guy. So you can see how we're slowly starting to build up damage, uh, which can be very, very good for us. Um... <laughs> Just to see what we're drawn to. We have another Ultra Ball, so we can get down. A, we can get a second Decidueye and start putting more Feather Arrow damage on the field. Uh, the only thing I'm kind of worried about is a tr as a Trash Lunch Garboda. We have three, four, five, uh, five on the field right now, and there we see a Wonder Tag. And I wonder what he'll go for. He really needs an Ace Roller or a Guzma, and there's a Guzma going to come out. And I wonder which one he'll decide to bring up. Maybe the Dartrex. Uh, Dartrex not a bad play. He gets a knockout, getting rid of the chance of us getting a Decidueye on that guy this turn. So, but we get into the flying flip off, which can uh, guarantees a knockout of one of the Trubbishes, which is really nice. Okay. <laughs> and he has no more spaces for our Gliss Pods right now, or Wind Pods. So, that's another good thing. He's gonna, gl he's gonna Guzma, but who does he bring out here? Maybe the Decidueye, he could two shot it, try to go that way. Maybe put pressure on top of Lele, but I think knocking out the Dartrex is the correct thing to do. And they ever see a heavy ball come down. And there's the Garbo Garboder Garbo Toxin coming down onto the field, which it seems scary, but it's really not that scary for us. We still have Top of Coco that can do Flying Flip, put some more pressure on the field, and there's the Garbo Toxin Garboder coming out into play. Um, but remember, as long as we get 70 damage on this Trubbish, we can knock out all of this Trubbish plus the Wind Pot at one turn. The only thing we have to worry about is an Ace Sorolla, and there we see Choice being onto the active. We'll see the Guzma most likely, so that way he can activate the first impression attack one more time. Um, yeah. So let's see. Um, does he have a DC? If he has a DC, he could go for a, a crossing cut GX on a Tapu Lele for the knockout, putting him down to three price cards. That would put us in some danger for sure. But does he have a DCE for that play? I don't know. So there's a Guzma. 
Gonna remove the dog tracks just like I thought as the correct play. Gonna sit on top of Coco. Gonna treat back to Glisspod and activate that first impression attack. So here comes Glisspod. Gonna take a knockout this turn, going down to four prize cards. But even though we're down two prize cards, I think we're still in good shape here. There's a rainbow energy being put to the active. So if we if we top deck a, a grass energy. We could theoretically go for an Aspion play. I don't know how good that is, though. I really don't want to go for that right now. We'll send to the Sigewide. It has the Floatstone. And on to our turn. What do we top deck? There's a Field Blower, uh, which I am going to use the Field Blower straight away. Getting rid of one and two. Press it done to get rid of both those things. Well, Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball doesn't really guarantee us anything. Uh, so I really don't want to play that. So I'm just going to put down the Lele. We could... Maybe get the Garboder stuck in the active spot, but if he has Guzma, then it's kind of useless. Uh, so right now, I'm just going to Lele. Uh, yes, we'll search for the card. I'm going to grab an N here and just put our opponent down to four while we get six. And hopefully find a Rare Candy to Sigewide. We haven't seen a Rare Candy just yet, so hopefully we hit one of those Rare Candies in our deck. We'll play an N. And there's a Rare Candy and a Time Ball, so if we flip one heads, we will be able to get this off. So let's see the Time Ball. Will it get us at least one heads? And there's a heads and a Tails. So we'll grab a Sigewide. We will rare candy into the Sigui. Okay. Let's see here. So 20, 40, uh, 60. Okay. I'm going to put the pressure on that guy. I'm going to treat into the top of Coco and just flying flip. Uh, now we're setting up multiple knockouts here. So that we're looking good right now. Uh, we can knock out the Glisspod. We can knock out the Garber, Garber, Garber Toxin. If he doesn't have a Flat and Flow Stone, we can knock out Double Trubbish as well this turn. Um, so we're looking great right now. We're looking fantastic. Even though it doesn't seem like it, I think we're in a great spot. My opponent is, once again, forced to find a Guzma. Maybe an Energy Go for a Crossing Cut GX play. Maybe an Armor Press. Armor Press, we don't care about. And there's a Flowstone going down to the Garboder, Garber Toxin, okay? They were seen Ultra Ball. Going to discard two cards from his hand. But we do have that second Field Blower. I don't know if it's in the deck, but if it is, we're in good shape. There's a Trash Lance coming down, okay? What's this one card in his hand? Is it a Sycamore? Is it a Guzma? And it is a Sycamore. All right, so with the Sycamore, does he find an energy? Maybe go for that crossing, the armor press, like I said. Uh, he actually has to go for a crossing cut GX. It would not knock us out with the armor press, uh, which gives Kako one more time to use the flying flip, put even more pressure on our opponent's side of the field. All right, so I think we're still looking great right now. Because um, if we get one more flying, flying flip off, we'll definitely be able to knock out multiple troubles in one turn. We see an Ultra Ball, going to start two cards from his hand. And this guy has a three retreat cost. And he's already played two Floatstones, uh, so he's going to be kind of struggling to find a third one, uh, maybe the fourth one. Maybe he should have kept the Choice Penalty active. It would force him to find a, a Floatstone on this turn. But I'm going to discard the N and a Glisspot, okay. There's another Trash Lynch Garboda coming down. But, I mean, <clears throat> I think we're still looking great. And if we top like a Field Blower right now, we're going to look fantastic. Because we can actually go for an Ace Rilla Field Blower combo, which is really nice. Um, but we'll see what he decides to do here. What will our opponent do? Uh, da -da -da. We actually could just straight ace roll up, pick up the top Coco if he doesn't take a knockout. That's not a bad thing either. Uh, but does he have energy? That's all that matters right now. If he does not have energy, we're looking good to go. And there's Rainbow Energy going to the active, and he's going to be able to use that crossing cut GX attack. Uh, taking a knockout and going to sit up probably the top of Coco, getting ready for a first depression. But he used his, his GX attack, so he doesn't have that anymore, which is fantastic for us. Going to send the top of Coco, going out to three prize cards, and we'll send up our Decidueye GX with the Floatstone. So on our turn, what do we get? Do we get an Ultra Ball? An Ultra Ball, really not going to get us anything. How many item cards are just going to so Two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight. All right, so nine. So I'm just going to Sycamore here. Uh, discarding the Espeon. I think that's fine. I think that's okay to do. So what didn't happen... Okay, we did find a Field Blower. Um, hmm. But we didn't find a Grass Energy like I wanted. I just wanted to find an Energy for the turn, which we did not find, unfortunately. So I'm going to go for a Field Blower. Getting rid of the Floatstone, and that's it. I'm getting rid of the Floatstone. Let's see. I'm going to Feather Arrow once to this guy. Feather Arrow once to this guy. And I think I'm just going to pass 
with the Decidueye and the Axe Spot. He's it's really not threatening anything. Um, yeah, so we're just going to pass to our opponent's turn. He needs a Guzma. He can bring up a, a, a Rangaroo to take a knockout that way. Uh, but as long as we find our Revitalizer, I don't know if our, I mean, our, our Rescue Stretcher. Just don't know. I guess our energies must be priced or something. That could be very really unfortunate. But... I think we're still looking okay. There's a Flowstone going down to Garbodon, Garbo, Garbo Toxin. That's actually fine. I'm fine with this. I'm 100% fine with this. Because right now we're threatening uh, one, two, three, four knockouts in one turn. Okay. <sighs> and actually, no. If we find a DC Choice Pain, we could knock out a Gliss Pod if he goes for first Fresh in this turn. How many resources has he played? One Guzma, one Ace Rolla. The one Ace Rolla does kind of scare me because he can Ace Rolla somebody and pick up all the damage Pokemon. Um... But next turn, we're just going to Sycamore, hopefully fine. Okay, there's a Choice Man going down to Glisspot. Okay. I'm definitely just going to Sycamore this turn, trying to find a Rescue Stretcher and Energy. And, I mean, hopefully with this, we will be able to find it with those cards, but who knows? There's Glisspot coming up. We might see an Armor Press. No, First Person is definitely the correct play to do here. Um, he didn't use a Lysine or Guzman this turn, so that's good. And I think we're I think we're looking okay here. So yeah, there's a armor press over 130 actually. So it goes for the armor press, which we really don't care about. Uh, there's a revitalizer, really not going to help us. So I'll put a flustone on the decidui, and I'm just going to sycamore. I'm just discarding your hand, drawing seven new cards. We find a dc. Oh, okay, so there we go. So we'll rescue stretcher. Put a Pokemon discard pile in our hand. We will grab the Espeon EX. Uh, put down the Espeon. Put a Grass Energy on it. Retreat into the Espeon, and we'll use the Miraculous Shrine to de-evolve four Pokemon, which will take us four knockouts. All right, so there goes the Garboder, Garboder, Galispod, and now we're looking good to go. All right, so there we go. Uh, taking four knockouts this turn, thanks to Espeon, so one. And the Dartrix, not that useful. <laughs> okay. I'll uh, take a two, three, two prize cards, so two... And there's an N, which could be useful. Three. There's a Ninetales GX, not useful at all. Or, actually, we take five prize cards. Just realized we took our five prize cards. Wow. Okay. Oh, no, four for four. Four for four. Four for four. four, four. Um, so what we can do next turn is put a DC or a Lele, retreat an energy drive. There is a heavy ball coming down. Okay, there's a wind pod coming down to the field. Um, yeah, I mean, we're looking fine. He really, he's not going to be able to get anybody out. 24 to 60. Actually, what we could do is Guzma up the Wimpod. Feather once. Okay, there's N though. So N will kind of disrupt us just a little bit. We do have the Rangaroo that can hit us some good cards. Um, and, and regardless, we can just retreat to Decidueye and still punish him. There's a, a DC in our hand. Um, we could go for Energy Drive, regardless, to knock out the uh, Tapu Coco. There's a Flying Flip doing 20 to everybody. All right, so can we find the Guzma that's in our deck? On our turn, we find a Guzma. And we're to Guzma, bring it up that Wimpod. We're going to send our Tapu Lele. Put a DC on this guy. Uh, 20, so 20, 40, 60, which would be enough for a knockout. We'll put another Feather Arrow. I'm actually going to put it on the Tapu Lele. Uh, instruct for two. Okay. <laughs> there is a distance right in and in, and we'll just go for energy drive for the knockout. Going down to one prize card. And even though look at my opponent was in a good position, he had all those guard boaters, he had pretty much everything ready to go. Um, you can see how the Zidua is still probably one of the best decks in the format. He does send the Tapu Lele, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, we actually can knock him out this turn with the DCE and some Feather Arrow stuff. And there is a victory screen, and there we go. Um, you know, a lot of people are saying the Glisspod, Decidu Glisspod Garboder is one of the best decks in the formats, but nope, Decidueye is saying, no, I'm still here, I'm still one of the best decks for the reason, and there we go, guys, just showing how good Decidueye is still in this format. Uh, we'll see another game with the deck here in a second, I'm just going to keep proving that Decidueye is the best deck to play in the format, even though Forest of Giant Plants has rotated out. Alright, we'll see what happens in the next game. Alright, so winning is Jimmy M, which I think is Jimmy McClure, I could be wrong, uh, but I, I think this time is... Hopefully it's not another Glitzpot Garboda deck, because that'd be pretty dumb to play against it twice. Hopefully it's Tapu Bulu or something new that we haven't seen. And um, this turn is actually pretty good. The only unfortunate thing, if it is uh, Glitzpot Garboda, we, we really need to hold onto this field bar and not play it immediately. Uh, so press done. We do have the turn one Bridget, which is really nice. All right, so 
What is he playing here? Hopefully it's Tapu Bulu, so we play a different game, uh, just to show a little bit difference. My PTCGO is not responding right now. Rest in peace, this is how you do lose with Decidueye. <laughs> is, uh, is PTCGO crashing on you? PTCGO has been crashing on me a lot for some reason, I don't know why. Uh, but hopefully, oh man, I think, okay, nope, we're going, hey, it's Tapu Bulu, hey, there we go. Alright, so we're going to Ultra Ball, discard an Ultra Ball and a Field Blower. Really don't care about the Field Blower in this matchup. Uh, we are going to grab... Tapu Lele, going to use Bridget, so come on down, Tapu Lele, yes, with our supporter card. The only problem is we will not have a, um, what is it, a spot for Tapu Coco. That's fine, though, because we could get Ninetales next turn, put a DCE, and start swinging with the Ice Blade, which is not a bad thing ever. We'll put those three guys, the guys down. Bloodstone the Orangaroo does have a hefty retreat cost and will struck for the one card. Hopefully it's a Nine Tails or DCE and it's a Rescue Stretcher. Probably one of the worst cards to hit. Alright, so we'll just pass on to our opponent's turn. But we're looking fine. We got a Dartrex. My opponent really can't swing. He got Horn Attack next turn. Really not that scary. And there's a Bridget of his own coming down. Gonna search for three Pokemon. Imagine it's gonna be two Grubbins and maybe a Tapu Coco. Oh, he's actually playing a Rorantis deck. All right, so I think the Lorantis version is even better for us. Uh, so third, Horn Attack for 30. That's fine. Onto our turn, we get a Acerola. We'll put down the Dartrex. And we're just going to Sycamore. I know we're discarding the Rescue Stretcher, but it's fine. There's a Decidueye Rare Candy. We actually get double Decidueye Rare Candy. So, yep. Looking good already. Uh, so that goes there. We will get another Rare Candy Decidueye. Okay. <laughs> um... Let's see. So we can start putting the Feather Arrows on this uh, uh, Femantis. So Feather Arrow. Feather. I think I'm going to Feather Arrow both of them just to spread kind of the damage around. <clears throat> I'm going to Floatstone the Active and a Rangaroo for one. Just trying to draw another card for next turn. Alright, so there's another Vulpix. And we're going to Beacon. And with the Beacon, we're going to grab a Decidueye and a Ninetales GX. Alright, no energies. I don't know what the last two games are, why we can't find energies, but that's fine. He's not going to be able to get attack off here. He mostly, he can, I mean, he can go for a Lorantis play. Um, but only gets one energy. It doesn't knock us out, if I do the, if I remember correctly. There's a Lele. Probably going to grab an N, uh, just to disrupt us, because we have Decidueye and Ninetales in our hand, which is very, very scary. And there's an N. Uh, you definitely don't want to leave my hand with a Decidueye and a Ninetales, because that is a scary combination. There's a Grass Energy action going to the active. Uh, he, oh, he can go for Nature's Nature's uh, Horn Attack for 30, which knocks us out. Yeah, duh. Duh, Josh. Alright, so, oh, there's a Ninetales. But we get an Ultra Ball. Okay, there is a uh, Lorantis GX coming down. Okay. And there's a Horn Attack for 30. I just kind of, I don't know why I just didn't expect the Horn Attack play. That was just me being dumb, unfortunately. Alright, so on our point, our turn. Let's see. So we get Top of Coco. Uh, I don't know if I want to commit anything to Top of Coco right now. Well, Ultra Ball discard the choice band and nine tails you grab another decidueye all right so we got three decidueyes turn two or what three whatever this is uh i'm gonna double feather arrow that F F mantis so feather arrow feather arrow taking a knockout okay we'll go down to five price cards we get a guzma and the Guzma is actually really cool because what we can do right now is just Guzma up like a Bulu. Maybe get stuck in the Axe spot. We'll do another Feather to that guy. Um, do we Guzma? Do we not Guzma? Okay, Guzma doesn't seem that bad of a play, actually. Um, but I kind of just want to put a Grass Energy on the Decidueye and just play an in. Uh, I think, yeah, I think it's fine. Just looking for a play in the end right now. There's a DC for next turn and a Guzma and an Aspion. Ooh, Aspion could be really good. Uh, the following turn. Uh, it's knock out the Lorantis. <laughs> Alright, so right now I'm just going to retreat into the Decidueye that doesn't have any damage on it and just pass it to our opponent's turn. The only thing I'm scared about is the top of Wilderness because he can't heal all the damage from this Pokemon. Um, but if we tell like a Choice Band, we actually get just one shot at Bulu, which is something really cool to do with this deck. Okay, so we'll see. There's a Guzma. What's he going to bring up here? Going to bring up the Decidueye. Uh, going to send him his Lele, which means he has a Flux. Oh, a DC, actually. So he's going to Energy Drive for 60. Okay. On our turn, get a Bridget. Uh, really not that useful. But what I'm going to start doing is Feather Arrowing. 
Um, and put some damage on the field. So let's see, 9, uh, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 15. All right, so if we do double Feather Arrow to the Layla, or to the Bulu, I'm going to put another uh, Feather on this guy. I'm going to put a Grass Energy on the bench. And I'm going to go for a, let's see, make sure Chloris Life can't. Okay, so Chloris Life on his 50, so I'm not too concerned about Chloris uh, that attack. So right now, I'm going to go for Hollow Hunt, I think is what I want to do here. Um... Yeah. We could just pass and just save the Hollow Hunt, because Hollow Hunt doesn't really guarantee us anything. So I'm just going to pass right now, which I know seems very strange. But next time we can bring up the Bulu and take a knockout 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 15, uh, which is enough for a knockout on the top of Bulu. Yeah, I think that's fine, actually. There's the Ultra Ball. I'm going to start two cards from his hands. Now, if he puts down a Lorantis or something, I'm definitely just going to knock it out, I think, immediately. Uh, no, I think knocking out the Bulu is probably the better play. Uh, we might see a Tapu, uh, maybe a Lele come down for a uh, Sycamore or something. Another Femantis coming down, which kind of sets up an awkward situation. But I think right now, knocking out the Bulu is the correct thing to do. But now we see an Aether Paradise conversation coming down. Uh, okay. Makes things kind of weird. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, so Rescue Stretcher, okay. For Fomantis. I think I'm just going to triple feather of the Fomantis and take a knockout. Another Fomantis hit the field. Um, and actually, what we could do now is take a double knockout on the Fomantis and Fomantis going down to two pri or three prize cards. Which I think is what I'm going to do here. Yeah, because like, Bulu is not threatening anything. There's a grass and you're going to Bulu, okay. And I think what I'm going to do right now is take a double knockout. We're seeing a treat to Bulu. Is he going to, uh, he's going to swing for a knockout here. Which will get rid of all of our energies, all of his energies. And that's fine. I'm actually fine with this play because now he has no energies. If I have to go for a flower supply to get more energies on the field. Um, but that's okay. We'll sit up the, the, the Decidui. On our turn. Let's see, what do we get? We get a, an Ace Rolla. Alright, so put a DC on this guy. Actually, we can't do what I want to do anymore because he knocked out our Decidui. <gasps> okay, so it's actually pretty bad now. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. All right. So, I think I'm still going to Guzma. <laughs> Bring up a Fomantis. Cinnabar Decidueye. Feather Arrow this guy twice. So, one and two. And then go for Razorly for 90. Or for 60, sorry, because the uh, everything in play. All right, so we got out of four price cards. And what we can do next turn is double Feather Arrow these two guys and retreat and go for an Espeon play. The so Grass to the active, okay. The Choice Band to the active. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do here. I think, yeah, I think we're going to go for that play. I think we're going to go for the double knockout on both these guys with the Espeon to go down to two prize cards. All right, there's a Lele. And let's see, will he grab an N? N would be really good right now, even though he doesn't know it. Let's see here. So, yep, there's an N. Going to put us down to four, but N's never really hurt us. That's a good thing about, uh, about him playing N for us. So, there's an N. Um... All right, so let's see what we find. All right, an Acerola, not what we need to see, really. And there's a Flower Supply for 70 damage, uh, which was 170 HP. Oh, boy, this is going to be a little bit harder than I thought. going to put a Grass Nude in the active. And a Grass Nude in the bench, Bulu. Mmm. All right, so there is a ch Choice Band. So I'm going to Fuel Blower. Get rid of the Choice Band and the Aether Paradise. Okay. I'm going to choice ban the Decidueye. Feather Arrow the Bench for Mantis. Alright, do we top deck an Ultra Ball? There's a Decidueye, which is not what we want to see. Okay, so if we go for a Rage Leaf here, we, we do 90. Um, but then he can knock us out with a Solar Blade. If he... F well, actually, he doesn't... Uh, 5, 10, 15. If he finds a choice band, he can take a knockout next turn. 
I think I still, okay, so 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I think I'm still going to Feather Arrow. And just Razor Leaf. Okay. So there we go. Uh, doing 150. Left 60 HP left. If he has the knockout here, we're in trouble. We are in trouble if he has a choice band of energy. If he does not have that, then we're okay. Um. Actually, oh, there's an ace roll. Uh, okay, so you're gonna pick up the that guy. Um, sit in the top of Bulu. Put a grass energy on it. Okay. There's an ether paradise coming down, and a horn attack for thirty. All right, so my turn to use my ace roll. So I am going to um, feather arrow. Let's see. The one sixty HP. I'm gonna put one on this guy. I'm gonna do another feather arrow to this guy. I'm going to Acerola the active decidui. Sit up this decidui. Put down a rallet. Put a grass energy on it. And go for a hollow hunt GX. Alright, so with this, I'm gonna grab another Acerola, a Guzma. And I really just want those two and maybe an N. Um, yeah, I'm going to grab these three. We already have Rare Candy Decidueye in our hands, so that's really good. Uh, we have a DC for next turn. Um, Actually, no, no, I think, I think we're still fine here. There's a Garash with the active. What we're probably going to see is a Top of Wilderness. There's another Fomantis coming down, and there's an N. Yeah, we're probably going to see a Top of Wilderness healing all the damage from this guy. Uh, which is going to be kind of annoying, I'm not going to lie to you. There's an Espeon. Espeon really not going to do too much first. And there's a Tapu Wilderness doing 150. But I think we're still going to be okay here. On to our turn. Get a Decidueye. So I'm going to put down the, the Rallet. I'm going to Guzma bring up this Tapu Bulu. Sending up a Ringaru. Um, put down Espeon. And we got Ringaru for two. We got Ringaru for one. I think I'm going to uh, Feather Arrow. No, not Feather Arrow. No, no, not Feather Arrow. No, 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 no. That's fine. We'll Feather Arrow the bench uh, guy. We'll Rangaroo for two. All right. There's a Timer Ball, um, which could be useful if we hit heads. We can find a Dartrex. All right. So grab a Dartrex. Put down the Dartrex. And let's see. He can do 180 next turn, which can knock out pretty much anybody on the field. Uh, so right now, I'm just going to retreat to... Hmm. Retreat to Rallet and just pass. Um, if we retreat to Rallet though, he can like take a knockout. No, he can take a knockout straight away. So yeah, I'm gonna send him the, the Rallet and just pass. All right, so under our opponent's turn, okay. Does he have a way to retreat the Tapu Bulu out of the Axe spot? So there's an Ace Rolla. Gonna pick up the active, uh, send up the Tapu Bulu. But we can knock out this Tapu Bulu next turn. If we play our cards right. <laughs> Alright, so here goes Top of Bulu. Okay. There is a uh, Lorantis coming down. Okay. There's a Top of Coco coming down. MC Nature's Judgment. Gonna do 90 damage. And 120 damage, sorry. Or whatever, whatever. 90 because there was this. Or whatever, the, the, the stadium. Alright, so on our turn. We get a DC, which is a good top deck. So 9. Let's see. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh, baby. We actually don't have the knockout right now. Uh, let's put down the Zidueye. The 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, we need to find our other field blower. So, I'm going to instruct for two. I don't even know the other field blowers in the deck. There's a Rare Canyon DC. So, I'm going to Ultra Ball, discard those two. Grabbing a Lele. Oh, boy. It's not in our deck. Okay. Hmm. Um. Grab the Lele and go for N, putting him at two, and just hope he doesn't find a Guzma. Which I think is what we're going to do here. So we'll Lele. Use the Lele. Yeah, we're going to be... That Nature's Judgment is going to save him just barely. So yeah, we'll... We could go for a Guzma here to bring up Smite and get him stuck in the Act spot. Uh, but then he just needs energy. So I think right now, I'm just going to go for a N here. Yeah. So I'm going to grab the N. 
I'm going to play the in. Okay. There's a DC for next turn, so we can treat the decidual if we we'll need to, okay? Um, but then he can put two grass on this guy. Man, it's just so weird right now. Alright, so Feather Arrow wants this guy. Feather Arrow wants this guy. 9, 10, 11, 12, but then he'll be saved by the Aether Paradise. So I'm going to treat to Decidueye and just pass. If he did not have the stadium, we would actually be A-OK -okay here. Um, it does give a Guzma. I can knock out the bench Decidueye GX. Alright, what's in his hand? There's a grass new to the Fomantis, which is what I'm actually, to the Romantis, which is actually what I'm scared of. Um, because if he has one more Grass Energy, he'll be able to use the, uh, uh, Floracythe GX. Oh, he actually uses GX Tech, so he actually cannot do what I thought he could do. Oh, baby. So we're still okay here. And there's a Nature's Judgment. Alright, so doing 120. <laughs> On our turn, we get a Decidueye. Someone put a DC on the active. Um, so let's see. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14... We have to do all three. We have to do double feather to the active. So feather arrow once, feather arrow twice. Okay. Which is now it's in a range for a knockout. Okay. And then I'm going to go for a sycamore. All right. So it's time ball on Acerola, which could maybe help us out the following turn. We'll retreat into the Decidueye. Yep. I'm going to timer ball. Just sting our deck out, all right? So we're not going to be able to see what's in our deck either. How many Guzmas have we played? Uh, one Guzma. So there's one Guzma somewhere else. All right, so we'll just raise Leaf for the knockout. All right, so we're going to we'll go down to one prize card. If we find a Guzma, we can knock out the Top of Coco next turn. There's a Revitalizer and a Sycamore. Two cards I do not want to see right now. So here comes Top of Coco. Oh, to our opponent's turn. He would not be able to take a knockout just yet. Um... Yeah, he can go for Flower Supply, which can set up a knockout with the Solar Blade attack. So here comes Lorantis. <laughs> Alright, there's a Bulu coming down, and there's a Flower Supply. Going to do 40, okay. <coughs> this is a tricky game here, guys. Alright, Grass Energy to the Bulu. And where does the other Grass Energy go? To the active. Alright, so on our turn. We get a grass energy, which doesn't guarantee us anything right now. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna double feather out the active Lorantis. So one and two. Okay, I'm going to Acerola the Decidueye GX to send in the Orangaroo. Hmm. I can put a DC on the Lele, Choice Bandit, Retreat, and Swing. Um, he is not throwing a knockout this turn. Alright, so there we go. Unless he has an Energy and Guzma, that's the only way he can win the game right now. He'll have to go for Soul Blade on a Decidueye. Or an Energy Switch. Uh, but next turn, what we're looking at is Espeon Miraculous trying to de-evolve that Femantis to win the game. I mean, into one could be somewhat, somewhat damaging, but we do have the Rangaroo. You see we have multiple Sycamores in our hand. We have two Grass Energies. Um, if he leaves the Lorantis in the active spot, I think we actually take a knockout. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so we're looking fine here, as long as he doesn't have another Acerola. He has played two already. He has three cards in hand. Does he have an, how many ends it? So he's going to treat into the Bulu. There's a Grass Energy. Does he have any switch? Nope. There's a Horn Attack for 30. And Espeon will help us win the game one more time. So, we'll put a Grass Energy to the Espeon. We will retreat into the Espeon EX. Uh, discarding the D DCE. And we will Miracle Shrine for the game. Taking out that Lorantis. Alright, and there we go, guys. There is Decidueye once again proving that it is the best deck in the format. That was kind of a sketchy game. It was a little bit weird. It was definitely harder. Uh, but we still found a way to do it thanks to Ace Rollas and some cool Guzman plays and stuff like that. But guys, hope you enjoyed this episode of Main Deck Monday. I know it's definitely a long one, but that's the thing about the format now. This standard format, these games are going to be so long, and we're still going to play best two out of three. 
it's going to be, oh man, best two out of three in the standard format is going to be so long. There's going to be so many ties now because these games are going to last forever. But there we go, just proving how good a Sage YGX is. But guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a fantastic Monday. Alrighty, bye. All right, guys, I just want to give a quick shout out to our three sponsors, Six Cards, Yeti Gaming, and the Pokemon Company International. Links to everything will be down below in the description. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Alrighty.